In the dying days of the Second World War in Europe, Adolf Hitler and his remaining inner circle were holed up inside the Führerbunker in Berlin. The concrete underground complex was where Hitler would take his own life, as would Joseph Goebbels, along with many other of Hitler's closest. Those who remained at the bunker in Berlin would either decide to die along with their beloved Führer, or eventually try and make a breakout. The final days of the Third Reich have been much documented, however one aspect that isn't as well told is an execution ordered by Hitler on one of the highest ranking members of the SS. Hermann Fagelheim was not just Heinrich Himmler's representative in the Führerbunker, he was Adolf Hitler's wife's brother-in-law. Fagelheim was described by Albert Speer, the Minister of Armaments, as one of the most disgusting people within Hitler's circle. So join us today as we look at the ruthless execution of Hermann Fagelheim, and remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Hermann Fagelheim was born in Bavaria on the 30th of October 1906. After studying at university, he would join a cavalry regiment, and later in 1927, the Bavarian State Police. However, he left this role after he was caught stealing. Within Munich and Bavaria at the time, Fagelheim would learn about the Nazi party in the SS, and his father had allowed the SS to use their horse riding institute for training. Fagelheim would join the Nazi party in the SA in 1930, before he transferred to the SS on the 10th of April 1933. He worked within the equestrian training centre and also oversaw the preparation of the equestrian events and facilities for the Berlin Olympics. Through different promotions he would rise through the ranks of the SS and would also excel in different horse riding events. He dreamed of participating in the Olympics representing Germany, however when war broke out his role would change. With the outbreak of war, he was in charge of the SS Totenkopf, Reiter Standarte, or the Death's Head Horse Regiment. This cavalry battalion was split into smaller groups to help the police, and Himmler, the Reich Führer and head of the SS, would order the battalion to grow in size. Fagelein and his group would be involved in the extermination of many of the elite Polish population, such as intellectuals and the clergy. They would be responsible in particular for the mass shootings of 1,700 people inside a forest. As the war continued, they suffered from a series of weapons and food shortages, and Fagelein himself would be brought before court-martial, accused yet again of stealing goods, which were transferred back to Germany. Allegedly a lorry was found, with a six-cylinder Mercedes in the back, another Mercedes, a two-seater car, 50 pounds of coffee, 14 packets of cocoa, a chest of tea, two chests of chocolate, along with clothes, furs and other goods. This accusation was quashed by Himmler, but Fagelein was accused of murder motivated by greed as well. Reinhard Heydrich would at times try to investigate Fagelein, as he was accused of also having a relationship with a Polish woman, but Himmler would force Heydrich to look elsewhere. Fagelein's unit would continue their executions and killings, killing 250 Poles in one village, and he would describe the behaviour of his troops as clean and decent, despite reports about his men, robbing and killing civilians without being ordered to do so. His regiment would also take part in Operation Barbarossa, and were assigned to round up and exterminate Jews, partisans and other civilians. Fagelein's unit killed almost 14,000 Jews in August 1941, along with another 3,500 men. Throughout the conflict this would be a reoccurring theme, with mass shootings and executions being carried out by the cavalry regiment. Dozens of thousands more would be killed by the group, with much devastation caused as well. Fagelein was wounded by a Red Army sniper, but would return to the battlefield before being wounded again on the 20th of October 1943. After this, Himmler, who seemed to get on very well with Fagelein, sent him to work as the SS liaison officer to Adolf Hitler, one of the most prized roles within Nazi Germany. Traudel Junger, Hitler's secretary, would describe Fagelein as being very popular with the women, he had women flocking around him. He was a frank and honest person. No sooner had he appeared than he was sitting with us at the table in the Berghof. Those who were not his friends were his enemies until he was firmly in the saddle. He was clever, but ruthless. He was seen even by some as a heroic figure, and through his obsession with power, he would marry incredibly close to the Führer. Ava Brown, Hitler's short-lived wife, and Fagelein were allegedly close, and would dance often together at parties. Allegedly this would also arouse suspicion as to whether something went on between them, but it was clear that Ava Brown found Fagelein attractive. 
With this, she would manufacture and create a politically motivated marriage between Hermann Fagelein and her sister, Gretel Brown. It's believed Fagelein did this to further his career, and at the ceremony, Hitler, Himmler and Martin Bormann were witnesses. The reception took place at the Birkhoff and the Eagle's Nest on the 3rd of June 1944. With this marriage, Fagelein would, in a sense, become the possible brother-in-law to Adolf Hitler and the Fuhrer of Germany but he wasn't well liked still by everyone. Hitler would allegedly keep him at arm's length and would sometimes have suspicions about him. On the 20th of January 1944, he would also be present at the failed attempt to assassinate Hitler at the Wolf's Lair. Klaus von Staffenberg would try to kill Hitler during a conference and the bomb would explode killing four men. Hitler would be injured in the blast, as would Fagelein, who had a wound to his left thigh. Fagelon was asked to investigate the assassination, and it was described that he was personally indignant to think that anyone wanted to blow up such a splendid fellow as himself. He thought that someone killing him was more criminal than any plan to get rid of Hitler. Fagelon, once the plot had been discovered and the execution of the plotters had taken place, would then show photographs of the hanged men around the inner circle. By the beginning of 1945, it was clear that the German war effort was only heading one way, towards a complete collapse and loss. Hitler would retreat into the Führer bunker in Berlin to see out the war and eventually would take his own life inside the complex. Berlin was being bombarded by the end of April 1945 by Soviet artillery and by the 21st of April the Red Army tanks reached the outskirts of the city before it was cut off days later. Fagelein would not stay around to see out the war inside the bunker. Hitler's chauffeur would receive a request from him asking for two vehicles for reconnaissance and for the chauffeur to take hold of a briefcase with important documents belonging to Himmler and Fagelein. It was said that if the enemy entered the bunker, the documents should be destroyed or hidden and they must not fall into the enemy hands. The chauffeur would agree to the deal and Fagelein would leave the right chancery with two vehicles. The vehicles would return 30 minutes later without him inside as Hermann had left the cars in the Kurfürsten Dam district of Berlin. After it was discovered he had abandoned his post, Hitler was furious and ordered him to be located and arrested. He had decided he did not want to join the suicide pact inside of the bunker. Fagelein was found inside his Berlin apartment, wearing civilian clothes and preparing to leave to Sweden or Switzerland. On his person was cash, jewellery and documents with evidence of Himmler's attempted peace negotiations with the Western Allies. Most accounts state that when he was arrested he was blind drunk, but that evening Hitler would find out that Himmler had attempted to broker peace with the Allies. For this, Hitler was outraged and believed Fagelein was also involved in the plot. He ordered Fagelein to be interrogated and he was stripped of all his ranks and then court-martialed. During interrogation, he was allegedly so drunk that he would state that he was only responsible to Himmler and would also cry and vomit throughout, being unable to stand up and even urinated on the floor. Fagelein was then ordered to be executed. Ava Brown allegedly asked Hitler to spare Fagelein, as his wife and her sister was heavily pregnant. It was said that Hitler was as calm as before, only Ava Brown's eyes were red with weeping, because her brother-in-law was condemned to death. She tried to explain to Hitler that it was only human nature for Fagelein to think of his wife and child, and help them get a new life. Hitler, though, would deem this as treachery and desertion. On the evening of the 28th of April 1945, Fagelein would be dragged out of the Führerbunker where his interrogation had been taking place. It was claimed that he was still drunk at the time, but the execution must have taken place following the news about Himmler's betrayal. He was dragged into the garden of the Reich Chancellery, which at the time had been suffering from bomb damage by the Soviet artillery that bombarded Berlin. He was lined up in the garden to face his death, and his execution in a military fashion, as was customary for court-martial, was death by shooting. The film Downfall shows his execution in the bombed-out garden, with Fagelein shouting Heil Hitler before he was mown down by a single machine gunner. At the time within Berlin, it would have been difficult, such was the state of the war, to gather a hastily arranged firing squad, so it's assumed that the execution was performed by one solitary member of the bunker's staff. It was claimed by Hitler's secretary that he was shot like a dog in the garden of the chancery. It is not known specifically who executed Fagelein, 
However, the last surviving member of the Führer Bunker would take that secret to the grave with him. Hermann Fagelheim was a man who was motivated by his own determinations to become as powerful as possible. As mentioned, he was described as a disgusting and despicable man, and it's clear that he was a war criminal, having ordered and participated in the thousands of executions that his cavalry unit took part in. He was a man who remained close within the inner circle, once he had established himself. However, when the war was lost, he wished to simply flee to escape his impending fate. His demeanour in his final days shows us how he really was a disgraced member of the inner circle. Once again, thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.